welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie. This is the A Week 41, October the 6th through the 12th weekly wrap up. This is the week 41's a weekly wrap up for October the 6th through the 12th and I read a total of 12 books this week. It has been very busy. I'm still rocking my sweatshirt and uh, my swim t-shirt from today uh, in which I have been up since like 5 30 this morning um, going to a swim meet and my son did amazing amazing if you were watching my insta stories or if you have been following my instagram you know that he dropped time on all of his strokes this weekend and dropped a whopping 20 seconds on his 200 freestyle i'm so proud of him and so excited that uh he is starting this new season off with all of the techniques that he has been learning about and just really excited about that super super excited about that other than that um i uh asked you guys just a reminder that i'm gonna let you guys pick a book for me so make sure that you check out the pick a book based off of one paragraph uh video check that out i read a paragraph from five different books and you guys get to choose which book I will be reading in the comment section they are already pre-written out so all you have to do is go over there and give the thumbs up to the book that you like the most and that will be the one that I will be reading before the end of October and giving you guys a wrap-up of that book in that wrap-up okay so now that we've gotten all of the craziness no, we haven't, because I also was thinking about starting a Patreon, and you guys swiftly told me that you would not pay to watch my videos, so that's okay. That's all right. I will just have to uh, get other people to, you know, pay me for making these videos. Let's get on to what I read last week. Last week, I started the week off by reading A Lesson in Thorns, which is Thorn Chapel number one by Sierra Simone. I placed this in Dark Romance. Oh, so good. I give it five stars. I give it five Steam fans. This book is not for everyone. I listened to it on audiobook, and it is for Romance genre -thon which is, you know, dark, taboo, gothic, occult, all kinds of goodness in my book. Um, and this book falls into all of those categories. You have Poe Alden, Alden? Yes, Rebecca, Delphine, uh, Beckett, and Saint. These are six characters in which they had a summer together when they were young and then they got older they moved away they went through the winds and it moved away and then they're coming back and this is the first book of four books in this series so don't get your panties in a bunch because you're not going to know all that's going on. This is one of those books that you definitely need to listen to or read and really pay attention to all the things that are getting thrown at you because all of the characters have very complex and multi-diversional uh, characteristics. Uh, there is uh, male male romance going on there's female female romance going on there is male male female romance going on there is an orgy going on there is a mystery that happens it's taboo it's goodness and I was here for it oh my goodness so much here for it the next book that I finished was Halloween Boo by Sarah Spade. This I'm placing in erotic supernatural so novella so yeah we're going to go there. Uh, I give this book 3.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an ebook, and this is a Halloween story. My girl Brie and I decided to read this one. It's about a ghost and about a woman that moves into this ghost apartment, and the two of them are co-being in this apartment. It's just a guilty pleasure of goodness and it just seemed to fit the sort of 
theme that we have going in October for Halloween and all the craziness. If you haven't figured it out, my nails are October themed as well. I normally don't get into the holidays, but I went with the candy corn and these are fire. I love them so very much. The next book that I finished was The Guy in the Middle, which is Fair Catch. Uh, part of the team player number two anthology of sports romances this book this novella was written by Kate Stewart I'm placing this in new adult and I give it 4.5 stars I give it four steam fans I had it as an arc although the anthology is out and available to you guys I just hadn't had a chance to get to it yet um but when I read it uh, I am very happy about it I do have to say that it leaves you on a cliffhanger. Our two characters are Lance and Harper. They, one's a football player, the other is the coach's daughter, and the two aren't supposed to mix, but the two do mix, and this is the beginning of their story. The rest of their story is coming in, I think, January of 2020. I was a little upset about that. I thought I was just going to get a sweet, fun novella in the world that Kate had brought up. The Guy in the Right is the book that preceded this one, and I thought I was going to just going to get a story, like a little snippet story of one of the characters that we met in that one. But this is a snippet of a snippet, so yeah. It's okay. It's all right. I'm not too mad because it was good. It had some emotion to it, and it was fun. But I really kind of wish I had a uh, happily ever after at the end of that one. The next book that I finished was Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Laurie. And I placed this in Contemporary. I give this book three stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read it as an arc. And there were quite a few issues I had with this book. I wanted to like it. And I'm coming to find that Christina Lauren is a hit or miss author for me or author duo for me um some of their books i like some of their books are just like mm, meh this happens to be one of those mm, meh books for me so you have tate who is the daughter of a big time movie star who has been well hidden and taken out of the spotlight she and her grandmother go to i want to say england for a trip when she turns 18 and Sam and his grandfather who ended up raising him I think it's his grandfather or his grandmother's husband some some they're connected somehow but the two of them meet and Tate and Sam end up exchanging very vulnerable stories to each other and one ends up selling out the other and then years down the road they have another sort of run-in with each other similar to the run-in that they had when they were kids I didn't feel any chemistry between them I had issues with how slow the plot moved along I just wasn't feeling this book I'm sorry the next book that I finished was Wonder Love by Rachel Blaufeld. This is a new adult story. I give this book five stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read it as an ARC in electronic form as well as being sent a physical copy of an ARC by Rachel, which thank you very much. I loved it. It is so pretty. Um, I posted pictures over on Instagram and it is so lovely. So this book follows Emerson and Price and Emerson... Her mother left her when she was younger, just left her on the doorstep with her father. So the only thing she's known is that her mother lived in New York City. And when she turns 18, she decides to go to New York City and find her mother. Um, and she has a chance meeting with Price. And Price has some issues with his father, who waited until he was ready to go to college and ended up you know, running into having similar issues that Emerson had. So the two of them sort of bonded over the lacking of a parent. And I really loved how the story sort of unfolded. There's a bit of a twist that happens. Um, I sort of had a feeling that there was going to be um, more of a connection than we had expected or that it was being shown. And I still loved all the twists and turns that ended up happening and I was emotionally moved by all of the reveals that happened. I th definitely think it's something you guys should take a chance on. 
the next book that I finished was Between Now and Forever, which is Forever Number One by Dylan Allen. I place this in a new adult. I give this book five stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ARC. And this is a black author. And you guys need to go read this. Like, seriously need to go read this. So Lizzie or Elizabeth and Carter were introduced to me by Dylan on the Read Me Romance podcast in a short story form. And when I read or listened to that book, it was a novella. It's about their life now. And I was like, I need to know their backstory. Well, did Dylan give me just one book? No, she didn't. She's giving us three books, three books into their lives of how they got to the novella that was on the podcast. And I am so happy about that. So this is the first book. This introduces Elizabeth and Carter together. You get to find out about their histories as individuals, how they came together, how the issues that they have. Um, Elizabeth is a sheltered daughter and Carter is a... I guess you could say a child prodigy when it comes to piano and I think it's piano that he he's a musician of some sort but both of them have you know these issues that are going on with their lives and I was just here for it I was like yes so many yeses I can't wait for the next book because that ending was just like what what is going on what I wow wow I need the next book like now like seriously now the next book that I finished was off the ice hat trick number one by Avon Gale and Piper Vaughn this is an LGBT uh sports romance I give it 4.5 stars I give it five steam fans I listened to it nope I read it as an ebook uh, for a Read Bliss project, and this book follows Tristan and Sebastian. They are, so Tristan is a pro hockey player, and he's young and new sort of to the sport, not real new, he's not a rookie, um, but he's been in the sport for a little while, and he's like, I know I need to set myself up to really make sure that I have a future if something was to happen. That was really sort of the undertone and he went back to school with the encouragement from his mother and everything like that to say, hey, go and get your college degree. So during the off season, he decides to take courses and Sebastian is the professor in which is over one of his courses and Sebastian's this hot mm, little Latin yumminess of goodness and the two of them notice each other however they don't like really touch on it and the class that they're taking really sort of explores the sociology of coming out and uh diversity and things like that so I really really enjoyed it and then come to find out both of the authors are queer and I was here for this story I was all about it and it deals a little bit with VDSM so if you're not into that um you might want to shy away but other than that it's a amazing book i loved it so very much the next book that i finished was heroin by mindy mcginnis this is a young adult hard-hitting contemporary i give it 4.25 stars zero steam fans I listened to it as an audiobook and I am placing this in romance genre-thon even though there isn't a romance within it. It is a hard-hitting uh, dark themed story so it definitely falls into my categories. So this story follows Mickey who is a high school catcher of softball, softball catcher and her and her pitcher get into a horrific, horrific accident uh one evening and this is all about how op opioids can sort of destroy someone's life and you know you do get two sides of it but this is definitely mickey's side of it is the darkness and the you know the things that go on in someone's mind that may have an addiction issue so there is content warning for addiction and drug use um 
death, grieving, so many things, so many things. Uh, but it's very hard hitting. Uh, it is a good read if you can, you know, take those dark issues and it's realistic. It's something that's happening today and people can relate to it. The next book that I finished was In the Raw, In the Kitchen Number One by Elaine Griffin and Nika, Nika Michaels. I place this in LGBT as well and I give it four stars. I give it five Steam fans. I read this as an ebook for a Read Bliss project and this book follows James and Ethan. They have been in culinary school together. They have been noticing each other. However, they're in their junior year and they're competing against each other and the rest of the class for a scholarship for their senior year. And one is a hotshot chef uh, that has it all together and knows what he's doing, but when it comes to baking, he's not so good at it. It's not his thing, which I do agree with some of the other reviews because I noticed it, but I didn't really notice it. And then once I finished it, I read a couple other reviews. A lot of people made mention that these guys are juniors, have done three years of culinary school, and some of the things that came with the baking portion of it seems very medial, like someone that hasn't been in the kitchen at all to not know some of the equipment that was used or techniques and things like that. So that was a little off-putting, but I scrapped it. I was like, eh, whatever. Next. Um, and it's fine that they didn't understand. This, once again, does not end with a happily uh, ever after. It doesn't even really end with a happily for now because there's two other books in this series. I'm very kind of upset about that. Um, I guess I should have checked it out before I went into it, but uh, that's okay. It's all right. There is another two books that I may check out to see if uh, their love story continues or what happens with it. The next book that I finished was Can't Text This, which is Textual Number 3 by Tegan Hunter. I place this in a new adult. I give this book 3.5 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. This author will be at a Polycon in 2020. And this book follows Monty and Robbie. Robbie is a single dad. Monty is a sort of closed off, closed up uh, virgin. And she ends up going out to the bar one night and they end up hooking up. And this is their story. Um, unfortunately, I probably should have read this one in physical form or an ebook form because the narrator, one of the narrators just wasn't good. Just wasn't good. Like when I go into an audiobook and there is a dual narration, I sort of expect that the narrator's voices are going to sort of match when they're reading the other person's part. This one was completely off-putting and it sounded like two different books. Was not happy about that. Plus, a lot of the things that were happening were very juvenile and I just didn't, I wasn't here for it. I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite out of this series that I've read so far. The next book that I read was A Lie for a Lie, all in one, nope, all in number one by Helena Hunting. I place this in New Adults and give this book four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an ARC. And there is content warning for PTSD, um, traumatic events, secret baby. Sorry, guys. Um, and a creepy neighbor. So, yeah, we have Rook and we have Lindsay. Rook is a professional hockey player. He is on the team from Helena's other hockey stories, Puck, the Puck series. So it it helps if you know who these other players are. Um, and there are some spoilers. If you haven't even started that other series, it wouldn't be really a spoiler. Uh, but you do find out that a couple of couples are together and how many kids they have because whew, Lainey ends up being an aquarium... Um, researcher 
she does research on dolphins and whales and Rook and her met when he took his annual trip to Alaska and they spent like six weeks in a bubble where they didn't have any contact with the outside world so Rook ends up telling her a very personal nickname instead of giving his actual name of Rook and then there are some things that kind of tore them apart but then they come back together and secrets are revealed people's feelings got hurt uh but fate is a fickle bitch and yes this is their story i was here for it i really enjoyed it um i know that there were some things that i wasn't here for um like the creepy neighbor and uh the event that was used was used tastefully i think for the ptsd but at the same time it didn't really explore um some of the aspects of it it didn't go heavily into it so technically i could probably say this is more like a 4.25 story for me but uh that's probably as high as i could go and then the final book that I read was Wanting My Stepsister by Alexa Riley. This is an erotica. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance. And this is the first book in their season four uh, list of stories. And this book follows Libby and Jasper. They are brother and sister by marriage. I would be okay with this book um, if if there hadn't been so much mention of the fact that they thought of each other as brother and sister but at the same time didn't think of each other as brother and sister because if they hadn't have had that sort of oh we're brother and sister even though we didn't really grow up together our parents got married when I was, one was 13 and one was 16. There's only a three-year age gap between them. So they were both sort of going into puberty. So it's it's not really like, you know, they were a brother and sister. And they kept, they, the story kept mentioning it, so that kind of threw me out. And I was just like, ugh. It was kind of cringy. Um, but yeah. So that's it. Okay, so that was what I was reading last week. Let's go on to, on to what I am currently reading. I am currently getting into, yay, finally received my copy of Venom by D. Garcia. This is for the Sinful Fairy Tales collection. I think that's what it's called. And I'm super excited to start this one. This is a retelling of some characters from Peter Pan and I'm here for it. This cover is fire and you guys will be hearing about these fairy tale retellings that are sinister in nature in the next coming weeks because there are 17 of them that I will hopefully fingers crossed be reviewing and letting you guys know about my feelings for them. I am also reading Straight Up Irish by Megan Vernon and I actually won this entire series in a giveaway. I'm finally getting a chance to read this one and I'm really enjoying it so far. In the story we have a family whose father passed. They have a distillery, I think it is, or Irish whiskey. I think that's what they produce. In Ireland as well as in the United States they have distribution centers or pubs in both places and they are one of the clauses that their father put in his will is that they all had to be married and starting families before they could take over the businesses. So this is the first story of one of the brothers and this is a marriage of convenience, fake dating type thing. And I love it. I'm loving the narrators that they have gotten for the story because their English lilts are on point and panty dropping hot. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So those are the things that I read last week and the things that I am currently reading. I am thinking about doing sort of a challenge for myself to get caught up on my NetGalley uh, arcs because I have a couple that are overdue, but I also have some that are coming up. Uh, next week's reviews may be all arcs, so get ready for that, maybe, because you guys know I'm a moon reader and sometimes um, I don't the things that I plan just don't happen. So, 
other than that, let me know if you guys have read any of the books that I read last week, what your thoughts on them are. Are there any books that you're going to go out and check out from my talking about them? As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.